In this video, we're going to look at implicit differentiation. And I like to think of this as just more of the chain rule. And I kind of subtitle this as who's hiding in there. And you'll understand what I'm talking about as we go through the presentation. So we know that y equals f of x describes a function that has x as its independent variable and y as its dependent variable. And this means that whenever we see a y, we know that it is represented by some function of x because y is dependent upon x. So as a definition, functions that contain a combination of independent and dependent variables, which are coupled together, are called implicit functions. So an example would be something like x plus the natural, um, uh, the natural log of y is equal to 2. You see here we have a function that has both x's and y's, they're coupled together, and neither of the function is described explicitly or by itself. Functions written as y is equal to f of x are explicit functions. For example, we might have a function like y is equal to x squared times e to the x. Here y is described solely by the variable x. So y is dependent upon x and we're able to solve for y explicitly. So if we know that y is a function of x, quick question would be how do we take derivatives of entities like y squared? Because what we understand is that that y represents some function of x. So you might understand and expect that this would need the chain rule. And so that would give us something like 2y times y prime. Now why is that? The inside function, the derivative of y, would be y prime. We have to just represent it by y prime because we don't know what the function is, but whatever that function was that was inside, we'd have to take its derivative. And then the derivative of the outside function, something that looks like y squared, applying the power rule, would give us 2y. So the derivative of y squared would be 2y times y prime. So a simple rule of thumb when taking derivatives of implicit functions, like y squared, will be to always remember that you will get a y prime or dy dx term if you're using the Leibniz notation. So when differentiating implicit functions, just remember that a function of x is hiding in all of the y's. And if you do that, then you'll remember to apply the chain rule and always include a y prime, or as we said before, dy dx term if you're using the Leibniz notation. So now let's look at an example. We want to find y prime if x plus e to the y is equal to 5. The first thing that we want to remember is whenever taking the derivative of y, we get y prime because of the chain rule. We also want to recognize that x plus e to the y equals 5 is certainly an implicit function. So we'll use our implicit differentiation here. So taking the derivative first of x, we get 1 because x is the independent variable, so we differentiate that just as normal. Plus, now we're ready to take the derivative of e to the y. The derivative of e to the y, the inside function is y, so we get a y prime term. And then, of course, we multiply that by the derivative of the outside function, which is e to the y, because we remember that the derivative of e to the y is e to the y. And that's equal to 0 because the derivative of 5 is 0. So finally, we need to solve for y prime because that's what we're looking for. So it'll take some rearrangement. And so we'll subtract 1 from both sides and divide by e to the y. And so we get that y prime is equal to minus 1 over e to the y. And if we like, we can rewrite that so it's not a fraction. So that's minus e to the minus y. Let's look at a second example. If 3x plus 2y plus 9 is equal to 0, find y prime. Again, we have to remember that whenever we're differentiating a y, because it is the dependent variable, we get a y prime. And because that, that's because of the chain rule. So differentiating the first term, which is 3x, we get 3. Differentiating the second term, we get 2 times y prime because the derivative of y is y prime. Differentiating 9 gives us 0. And then that's equal to the derivative of 0, which is 0. 
So we've differentiated all of the terms and we get 3 plus 2y prime plus 0 equals 0. Now to finish up we need to solve for y prime and doing so we'll subtract 3 from both sides and then divide by 2 and so we get that y prime is minus 3 halves. Let's look at a final example. This one includes natural log. So if we have x plus the natural log of y is equal to 0, we need to find y prime. Again, what do we know we need to remember? That since y is the dependent variable, whenever we differentiate a y, we should get a y prime term. And this is due to our chain rule. And so differentiating the first term, x, we get 1, plus the derivative of the natural log of y, we see a y is inside, so that'll give us a y prime term. And then the derivative of natural log of anything is 1 over that entity, so we get the 1 over y term. And then finally on the right hand side, the derivative of 0 is 0. Now we need to solve for y prime. And so to do this, we'll multiply each of the terms by y. Doing that, we get that y plus y prime, because the y and the 1 over y cancel equals 0, or rearranging y prime is equal to negative y. In our next videos, we'll look at some more examples.